Hey, and welcome back to the second Fireside Chat today. Uh, again, two wonderful guests with me, uh, Mattel Aris from Collector Group and uh, Blaž Golob from Heliot Group Europe uh, from Slovenia, both from Slovenia. So Mattel and Blaž, welcome uh, to the virtual stage of uh, C Innovation Stream in the Frame of Wolf Summit. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello everyone. How are you today? Great. Blaž, right? I will give you the word so you can start <laughs> today. <laughs> Good. Yeah. All right. So, possible. Yeah. Try to find out what new we can bring into video conferencing. So a real challenge. Yeah. You definitely brought a really positive color in your uh, background. So this, I really love this. You know, positive uh, orange color in the back back mm. background. This is really great. And we will try to be positive today. Uh, and we will be positive and you know searching for answers how we can basically reframe the key industry challenges uh, and start addressing the problems that matter to drive the future economic growth. Um, so why are you two you know, really good um, to discuss this, this topic or this challenge is because, uh, Matea, you are um, working in the multinational company collector with more than 5,000 employees, 20 companies in your, you know, in a way portfolio around the world. Uh, in a front front, uh, forefront of the innovations. Um, tell me, you know, to be in a such a, um, uh, you know, big company, multinational company, uh, you definitely are facing some of the changes regarding the, you know, key drivers of, of uh, key economic drivers. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? How do you you know, what are what discussions, what topics are on the table when discussing, you know, the, the, the future regarding the, the challenges and economic drivers? Yeah, uh, I think that we are facing a lot of challenges regarding the key economic drivers. I mean, the company Collector, I think that now for 16 years, I used to work as a logistic manager. So basically, I know, uh, I would say the manufacturing lands, landscape very well. Uh, and in the past, before, I don't know, five years ago still, uh, we were discussing what are the drivers for the company that is satisfied to grow. Yeah? And basically, we were talking about operational efficiency. This is one of the key drivers. Yeah, uh, Utilization of the equipment, uh, EBITDA, uh, innovation, and so on. But uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, it depends how you look at it. Uh, we are basically not very different from other companies because we have to face the macroeconomic trends, um, the changes in the business environment and so on. So when we are talking about what uh, is uh, necessary or what is basically driving the company, we are talking about different things now. Yes, innovation, of course, this is the, the, the topic number one in our company because we are uh, a technological manufacturing company, but also the technology transfer because we have competences in certain technolo technological areas. And today it's the challenge how you can, uh, I would say, implement the know-how that you have built in the company for the 60 years to completely other domain, to completely other uh, area. So basically the te technology transfer is one of the key economic drivers, uh, sustainability, uh, because you also work in automotive industry and uh, foremost, uh, the growth of the company. I think that uh, these are the, the, the main drivers uh, in, the, in the recent years. Mm -hmm. So you also said that uh, I mentioned that, of course, you have like a strong you know, footprint in the automotive industry, which has been you know, um, you know, faced with uh, a lot of you know, challenges in terms of you know, transforming and moving to more sustainable, let's say, powering sources and sustainability and, you know, lower carbon footprint. Um, how, how are the new goals or new challenges connected to this, you know, really different way of, uh, or different set of goals connected to your business uh, environment? Well, in automotive industry, I think that um, I would say we have a situation of a perfect storm. Uh, we are still very, I would say, present in this industry. And um, I mean, we are moving from uh, engines from uh, which have internal combustion to electric drives, 
Uh, then we have uh, uh, self-driving vehicles, uh, car sharing economy, and so on. And this is not something that a traditional manufacturing uh, manufacturing automotive industry really likes. Yeah, but you have to change. So basically, we try to envision, envision the trends. We try to, I would say, uh, change our development um, in order to, I would say, go into the, the direction that is currently uh, uh, in a green mobility, for example, if you're talking about uh, automotive industry. So basically, we are trying to move in uh, electric sphere, uh, in electric drives, uh, and implement other technologies in order to support everything, every trend that is going in this direction. Uh, so basically, um, on our daily agenda is to contribute to sustainability development goals. Um, and we are trying to implement technologies that enable us, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the contribution to uh, green, uh, I would say, energy or sources of energy, renewable energies, because we also work in other sectors. Uh, we are also trying to implement, for example, um, exponential technologies like artificial intelligence in order to optimize the resources that we use in internal, I would say, manufacturing processes and other way uh, in order to... I, I would say contribute to um, work workplaces that uh, I would say uh, are more humane uh, and are more I would say contributing to to uh, people exploiting their full potential and similar. Uh, Blaj, uh, so you are also I mean you are in a business of you know in in empowering enabling building um, smart cities. So in, in, if I have, let's say, really uh, generalized what you do, um, did I make, make any mistake or am I right? Uh, pretty much okay, yeah. All right, so, and, and city are, cities are, you know, maybe one of the first, let's say, entities that have, you know, been aware of uh, that they have to be more, green sustainable that you know the economy and and growth is not the only let's say a currency or you know a kpi in the city so how are you as a smart city solution provider or really the, like an active part of this ecosystem um uh, connected and um implementing these sustainability goals or you know being or enabling cities to be more green uh more friendly, more sustainable. How do you feel these forces, you know, uh, um, you know, pressing on you or challenging you in your company? Okay, uh, thank you. So yeah, uh, the whole uh, story about smart cities uh, development started like 10 years ago, and it was more mainly driven by corporate sector in the very first stage and some icon cities like Barcelona, Vienna, uh, Dubai, uh, and many Chinese cities. And uh, of the solutions were very expensive, not affordable. And of course, it was a big uh, economic drive uh, for many solutions uh, to be digitally transformed in the cities. So now in 10 years, uh, we learned a lot uh, about the the real where the value can be created what is the cost of some of the solutions and when the where the space is open for many many uh, niche players so uh, and the big story also was related to data the use of data and uh, for what kind uh, for what cost uh, of data you can provide solution so now you see, we see that for many solutions in the cities, but, but at the same time, cities were not always able to catch up with uh, what industry offers. So that's big place for startups, uh, for innovation in between big corporations, what they offer on one side and on the other side, what are the real steps for cities to be developed? So our company, is focused on providing the right the data for a reasonable price and which means for many solutions like mobility car sharing uh, on one side and then second on monitoring of conditions because we know that the big uh, issue in the cities is like quality of air 
quality outdoor, indoor air, even pandemic force even more this question, how, what quality of air do we breathe inside of the kindergartens, kids, schools, public offices, uh, or private uh, households. So, yeah, those is the, this is the area where bringing the right amount of data in order to that use cases function is a challenge. So our company, Sigfox, provides data for a reasonable price. Blush, in how many cases you have faced, let's say, your client, so I presume this is like municipality, right? Um, with a question, uh, Blush and Six Fox, uh, Six Fox and Heliot, for how much you can reduce us or how, how, how much you can reduce the carbon footprint um, in, in our city by implementing your solution. So my question is, uh, how many times did you face you know did that the city as such has like a really like a, a like a kpi on the table on the wall you know uh, and and trying to kpi related to sustainability uh, or you know eco, um, environmental friendly uh, environment uh, and that they are really pursuing this goal and they they you know do everything they do in order to you know make this kpi better yeah. Okay, very good point. Uh, yeah, we even EU, which I can say, especially the new leadership uh, of Ursula von der Leyen and also European investment bank behind, uh, and seven years planning it in all uncertainty of the global environment, we see that there is some certainty. And this certainty and clear direction is next five years of EU direction. So goals are set up, finances are behind, and a really high standard of protecting environment and reaching sustainable development goals are very clearly defined. So, and all this is supported by digital transformation. So they call it like dual strategy at the highest level. So, and now, if you see from macro level, the highest level, it affects many different sectors, and especially also the development also of smart cities and digital transformation of cities. So, at the end, our uh, when we design industry solution or when we talk with the clients and when we meet specific requests, we always need to have in mind how our digital transformation solution will at the same time help to reach green agenda goals. So which means, for example, uh, less garbage, which means better use of water, how we measure water meters, uh, what is the transfer of data. Third, what is the cost? And even fourth, we need to be sustainable also in how much data do we need? Because we see that many, many times, for many use cases, we need just the right amount of data. Because this is also garbage, too much data. So, uh, yes, we go hand by hand from uh, solution to solution, from pain point to pain point of the city. And it's always important to have in mind how our clients can, at the same time, when being digitally transformed, reach SDGs. One example from our side is also uh, batteries. We know that one of the big waste of today are batteries, either from cellar phones or electric cars. So batteries is the nightmare uh, of waste disposal and management for many, many cities. And uh, important is to mention that in order that our solutions operates, the lifetime of battery is, uh, on, for our cases, from five to 10 years. So, which is a, a real revolution. So we need to be sustainable too, which means we need to charge our cellar phones, you know, every day almost, or every night we put it plug in. But try to imagine you have solution autonomous for seven years and provides you data constantly. So this is sustainable, which means 
no waste, better reason. So, yeah. so this is, if we preach and help uh, to reach our customers, our customers reach these solutions, we need to do the same. Mm. So we need to uh, to do the same. Yeah. So walk the talk. That's yeah. That's basic. Yeah. But uh, how do you walk the talk? <laughs> you surprised me. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have to give me some some some. Uh, uh, I would say uh, give me something more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I walk. I'll, the talk. I'll ask you a sub question. So you are mm -hmm. um, in in the with collector ventures, collector digital. You are in the front lines of new technology changes, right? Uh, and um, how do you implement the, this increasing expectations for solutions that are, you know, taking into account the future of the planet, not only the economic KPIs? Mm -hmm. Well, basically, in Collector Ventures, we support companies that uh, have solutions for smart factories. Uh, this is this means that they are using <laughs> a lot of data yeah? and Blush also commented that data is not really cheap and it's not something that uh, consumes that does not consume energy yeah? uh, they're using AI uh, machine vision and so on so basically uh, I would take a look at the other side what we can do with those solutions uh, although we produce a lot of data yeah uh, if you want to, to make use uh, uh, of those solutions but basically we are trying to optimize for example we are using ai in order to optimize the production process so basically that you are not using so many electricity so many resources materials so that basically we are we are we are are being able to create with collaborative robots works workplaces that contribute to more humane society so basically that people do not perform uh, repetitive dull work so they they can uh, put their full potential to, to other tasks that are more I would say, uh, bringing more value uh, to the whole society community and, of course, to the company uh, itself. Yeah. So um, I'm looking at this, uh, uh, the, the, at those solutions, from the perspective that what they can bring to, I would say, to the company and to the, I would say, society and economy in a broader context. So basically, we are trying to reduce uh, overproduction. Uh, we are trying to reduce the use of resources and make more humane. Uh, society and, and the workplaces. We have three minutes left uh, in our conversation, so it's really um, time for re two really short answers. And the, the question would be, what would be the, if you would have a magic stick that would, uh, and you could change one thing um, in your business, let's say scope, that would make um, our lives more future-proof. What would be that one thing? Uh, and Blas, you go ahead first, and Matea second. So, okay, yes. Yeah, so I would, uh, I would say uh, that uh, coherency. It means coherency of business, and yeah, if we speak about the public sector and the mm -hmm. cities, which means B to B to G, B to government relationship. It's really important the understanding uh, of each other and inclusion of stakeholders in designing the solutions. So I see that IoT, Internet of Things, can really help big time for a reasonable price. And once we go beyond our own ivory towers and see and try to do a synergy with others, so it can be a good win-win. And I see yeah, that would be magic stick understanding each other in order for the common benefit here. Great. Great if I one. would be a wizard, so bam, yeah. Great one. Mataya, bam. Yeah, I'm moving from technology and other stuff to people, yeah. Uh, we cannot go into, I would say, the future if we don't have people that have the right uh, uh, skill set up, yeah. Because if you want to develop anything that is ready for the future, we need people that uh, can perform this, yeah. And on the other hand, if you want to implement this in environment, in the smart city and smart factor and so on, you have to have people that understand the technology and what the technology can improve. Yeah. So basically, if I have a wonder stick, I would have a people with different skills set up than today. Right. This is a great you know, look or perspective on how we can change uh, the future to be more, you know, you know environment or, or you know, e ecosystem 
friendly. So thank you very much for your discussions, for your really excellent thoughts on that. Uh, wish you all the best. And I, you know, really looking forward uh, to see how we all together can, you know, change the future to, to a better, nicer place to live. So all the best and um, see each other around. All the best.